Hey, what's up, guys? This is Scar from The Score Esports here with Keith McBrief, who recently just won 2-0. Um, and Keith, what do you got to say for yourself after that game? Hmm. Yeah. Game one, I owned. Game two, I got carried. <laughs> uh, all, right, all, right, all right, well, let's talk about uh, the, the one first thing I want to ask is, I noticed there's, there's a lot of Sivir priority in the region. So walk outside, energy, just pick Sivir. I noticed in your series, both teams are picking Sivir. Uh, in other regions like LCK, you see them picking a lot of Ash. Uh, mainly it's like Ash and Lucian, and then in NA it's more Lucian plus Sivir. So what are your thoughts on that specifically? Yeah, I think the, the AD meta is, I think first priority is Lucian for both regions, and then I think most teams will agree that um, Sivir's highest priority if Lucian's banned, and then Ashes can be pretty much played into anything, I think. Uh, okay, so going to the first game, I noticed that you guys picked Kha'Zix, which is really, really strange for me. So, And he also built like very team reliant, so he didn't take Chilling Smite, he didn't take Skirmishers, he took Rewarding, and then he ended up just being kind of an assistant damage source. Uh, I was curious, um, What's with the interest in Kha'Zix? Did you, was it as effective as you guys thought it would be? Or I'm curious uh, why you picked it. Um, we like Kha'Zix as like a more of aggressive jungler to like burst people down. And th the reason behind it was because they had uh, a squishy support. So basically we just wanted to go aggressive and kill them. Uh, I see a lot of Swain in both, all the regions, right? Uh, so I think that champion is ridiculous right now. He just gets, gets nerfed next patch, but at the moment he's like insanely strong. Um, as the AD carry, who's obviously like the guy who gets like spanked by th this champ a lot, um, how do you deal with Swain and like champions like Swain and Vlad like who are trying to dive you nonstop? Um, it's hard to say what actually counters Swain right now. So we, we pick, um, we, we won with it and then we beat it, interestingly enough. Um, I think probably the best way to, to beat Swain is like find a counter pick and then shut him down. Not don't let him get too strong, but it, it kind of sucks for ADs because you have to rush the damn executioner's cult or whatever it is to reduce healing. But uh, I think you just need enough damage to burst him down and like need to shut him down early. Uh, okay. I actually hate asking this question, but like, uh, so the first game I saw, you, you had Froggen play against Pyrian, yeah. and Froggen was up like 20 CS in lane. He was actually destroying the guy in lane. Um, and then he also did really, really well in game two. He he did, wasn't able to get ganked, ended up going 4 0 2. Um, what's your opinion on Froggen right now? Like, how do you feel playing with him on the team? Oh man, Froggen is just a monster. <laughs> I love having him on, on my team. I'm, it's good to know that, like, a damn good mid laner is on, will, 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 like, help me out. And um, yeah, he j well, we just we j all we all we have to do is help Frog out in the mid, like just go when he needs it, and then he'll pretty much do everything. <laughs> wow, that that's actually that actually sounds so nice. Um, and I guess on another team related issue or news, uh, you play with Big a lot, and a lot of people don't really remember Big. I remember when he was Baby Eater back in Challenger, and he's changed his name. I think Riot banned his name actually, but anyways, he changed his name. Um. What do you what do you like the most about playing with this guy? Like I know you guys have been playing for like a ho uh, one whole split, and you're still playing with him. Yeah. All right, what, what what do you just love about playing with him? I think the best trait of Big is that he always talks. So like he, in losing games, if we just get ace or something, he will keep talking, and then he will let us know what we have to do next. So he will keep all, all our heads in the game. I think that's what's best about him. Um, going back to the game real quick. So I noticed that KFO picked. Uh, Fiora the second game, and Fiora is a really, really rare pick. Uh, it was a in old split pushing metas, and you picked it into Swain, a champion that's known to shut down melee champs. Uh, was that something that Cable had a lot of practice in the matchup, or was he just confident he can just play Fiora into anything? Um, honestly, um, if we ask KFO if he beats this champion with Fiora, he will say yes 100% of the time. <laughs> I think it doesn't matter what champ they play, he will just say he beats it. So he's just really confident on that champion. And I'm not, I'm not even sure if Swain counters Fiora, but we just asked him what champion beats both Swain and Fizz, because we don't know what lane they're going into, and he just said Fiora, and we trusted him. Okay, so you guys were already prepared for the Swain flex pick going into the last rotations in the draft? Yeah, it was in our heads. I think we expected it. Uh, do you have, do you have, do you, right now, like, Fizz is really, really meta. You see Fizz, we get played a lot against Varus and a lot against Victor. Uh, as an AD carry, does that, is that more difficult for you to play around? Does that mean you have to focus more on like how to work around the mid lane? Or does that mean you just end up trusting your support more and your team more to try to help you peel? Mm, I think playing against Fizz definitely makes my like AD carries life harder. He will just ult and kill you and you're pretty much dead. 
But uh, I think it kind of forces teams to play more around vision and helping the AD carry out. So it's good for it's good for us. Okay. Um, I recently you're in Korea. You did super well on the Korean ladder. Um, how does it feel to play against all these other big Korean pros and to really? I don't want to say get your name out there, dude. You've been fuck top of the ladder yeah. in a so long, right? And you're top of the Korean ladder. But I guess just how did it feel to play in Korea and then um, really do extremely well over there to the point where everyone in ends up noticing you even more? Um, I think it feels good to, to place really high in Korea. But I have to say, Korean solo queue is, is, is worlds apart from NA solo queue. It's much more competitive. It's In some ways, it's easier to carry because I know, mm, I think... It's more, um, it's people are more cooperative with each other for the most part. There are definitely some trolls, but I think I can, well, com um, compared to any solo queue, it's just like, it's just a clown fiesta. I can't really do anything, but I don't know. I think Korean solo queue just bring, brings out my ability to carry. Yeah. Um, and how do you, how confident do you guys feel this season? Like, I, I, dislike asking teams how you're going to place at the end of the year because everyone's going to say first but um right now uh let's just say you guys are are do you guys feel like you guys are really confident being able to read the meta and improve or are you guys still struggling to figure out how you guys work together uh, i would say we're not overly confident or like not confident we're just like in the middle pretty much um i would say we're still working as a team um to like synergize and stuff but I would say that we would place top five. I think that's a pretty reasonable answer. Um, is there any closing statements you'd like to make to any of your fans, people who watch you playing Korean solo queue against the best, or playing NA, and for any fans of your org? I'll just say Rick Fox. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank, you, thank you, guys, and thank you, Keith. Um, I'm here, Scar, here at the Score Esports. And you can find more of our coverage online at the Score Esports and on our mobile app. I uh, hope you guys have a nice day.